G'day guys, my name is Jaden. welcome back to my channel. I'm at beautiful Istanbul airport. I just arrived from Cebu, the Philippines. I'm now gonna connect on a Turkish Airlines A321 flight from here to Rome, Italy. Uh, I've got Turkish gold, uh, elite more specifically, so I'm gonna check out the smiles and miles, miles and smiles rather, lounge. This airport is massive. It's only got one terminal where all flights depart from. Around the world, there aren't many big airports that do one terminal. I could only think of Istanbul, Bangkok and Hong Kong. The terminal is super crowded, but thanks to the ultra high ceiling, the noise level isn't too high. Istanbul airport has excellent signages, but to get access to Wi-Fi, it's quite annoying. Look for this Wi-Fi queue and obtain Wi-Fi login information. Turkish Airlines operate two international lounges at Istanbul Airport. Today I get access to the Miles and Smiles Lounge, which is a Star Alliance Gold Lounge. Star Alliance Business Class customers don't get access to this lounge. Turkish Airlines and Star Alliance Business Class customers instead have access to the Turkish Airlines Business Lounge. Many people on the internet and aviation forums say that this is the best Star Alliance Gold Lounge around the world. And I don't disagree, I'll show you why. First, the entrance is magnificent. A very spacious and airy feeling here. Do you want next to each other or doesn't matter? Doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> Six and seven. Thank you. Thank you. Second, the shower rooms are enormous and simply beautiful. Hello, welcome to the Miles and Smiles shower room at IST. Haven't had a shower for over 24 hours, so I desperately need one right now. Along with Cafe the Cabana, this is probably my favorite shower room Definitely my favorite if it's a business class lounge. You get a robe, don't know why you need it, but why not? Premium amenities and fluffy towels. Marble wall and floor. Very well lit as well. And the space is just humongous. Beautiful clean mirror. The toilet just down here. And the shower space, pretty big as well. You've got a standard shower head over here and a rain shower, definitely higher than six foot four. I just had a very lovely and warm shower. I also shaved and brushed my teeth. There are so many amenities in this shower room that many airlines don't offer, even in first class lounges, like slippers, rope, face and hand towels. In the Miles and Smiles lounge, it feels like you're in a five star hotel room. After that, I went outside to store my luggage. The lockers are indeed a nice and useful touch. Many people go to airport lounges for food. If you're one of them, this lounge is for you. You can see actual chefs cooking up fresh and fragrant pudets, as well as Asian noodles and pasta. For those coffee addicts, you'll find barista make coffee here which again, many lounges don't offer. Traditional Turkish yogurt from this barrel, why not? Dessert is mainly Turkish and Western style, such as baklava, cheesecake and chocolate cake. In the Miles and Smiles, there's so much other food and facilities that we didn't have time to enjoy it. I can't wait to come back in three weeks time when we finish our European journey to try other food and check out the cinema. 644 and I were just leaving this lounge and we were still discovering how massive this lounge was. If you need somewhere quiet and you can't get a private suite, this is the place to be. The floorboards and carpet give off a really cozy vibe. Before long, it's time to head to our gate D7 for our flight to Rome Fiumicino. From the lounge, it's about a three to five minute walk. Not too bad, considering how big this airport is. Our aircraft today is a 12 year old Turkish Airlines Airbus A321, Tango Charlie, Juliet Romeo Romeo. This particular A321 wears the Star Alliance livery. Thank you. Thank you. Boarding began with priority passengers first, including gold members, business class, and also people with mobility issues. Hello. 
welcome on board Turkish A321. Business class is laid out in a 2-2 configuration. It's similar to the Australian domestic business and American domestic first class, and very unlike the usual European business, where they just block off the middle economy seat. My seat for today's flight is 9A, a standard economy seat. Let me quickly show you the seat features. First, we got a coat hook, a touchscreen, adjustable TV. It looks like there should be a USB port there, but there isn't. You've got the TV remote right there, but it's stuck. The tray table is foldable and you can also move it back and forth. A standard seat pocket here. Leg room is okay, about 31 or 32 inches. Every seat also comes with an adjustable headrest. And I'll also try out the recline. It's rather generous for a narrow body aircraft. Overall, it is a good product. It's comfortable, but it's a bit dated. TV is a bit old, it's not responsive to my fingers, my monitor is loose, and there's no charging at the seat at all. Every passenger is provided with complimentary earphones, and you'll find the plugs at the end of your armrest. Here's the wing view from my seat 9A. As part of my European journey, I'm going to take four Turkish flights in total, including the A321 CEO, A321 Neo, A350 and 777. I'm going to do a video on all of them, so please subscribe to my channel and click the bell button next to it so you won't miss out on any of them. Wi-Fi is available on this aircraft. Everybody gets free unlimited texting. Business class get one free gigabyte of surfing. Turkish Airlines members also get some quota. Push back today is 10 minutes early. Leg room does become a bit tight if the person in front reclines. I'll now quickly go through the in-flight entertainment. You can choose from 12 languages including Turkish, English, Chinese, Japanese and Korean. There's a wide selection of TV shows and movies. There's Barbie but there's no Oppenheimer. The in-flight map is interactive. You can zoom in and zoom out. The Turkish Airlines logos are the destinations that they fly to. About half an hour after takeoff, the cabin crew began the meal service. 
Today they will be serving dinner and a wide selection of beverages. For dinner, your options are beef or pasta. But it's unclear what exactly the dishes are, because the cabin crew simply said would you like beef or pasta. Well, I had pre-ordered the vegetarian meal, so I didn't have to care about the options. I was given an eggplant pasta. It's a vegan pasta. 644 went for the regular pasta option. It's vegetarian, so it's got cheese, but without eggplant or aubergine. And to be honest, they both taste really similar. Now for my starter, I got green bean salad, a bowl of fruit and water. Also margarine and bread. For the regular beef or pasta, you'll get bread and butter, and also a Turkish yogurt dip. For drinks, you can choose from a selection of alcohol, including red wine and white wine. There's also the regular coffee tea, soft drinks and juices. I went for a cherry juice. I've never had cherry juice before, same goes to tomato juice. On this flight, I noticed so many people went for the cherry juice, so I had to give it a try. It was not bad, I liked it, but I still prefer the Finnair blueberry juice. If you're enjoying this video so far, which I hope you do, Please give a like, comment down below, and share this video with your friends. And most importantly, please don't forget to subscribe. Each and every of your action is going to help the growth of my channel, and it will motivate me to do more videos like this one. I upload a true report like this one every single week, so you definitely don't want to miss out. We're halfway through the flight now. The crew just came back to collect rubbish and completed the service. Welcome on board Turkish A321neo, sorry, CEO rather, Economy Lavatory. There are four on board, one in business, three down in economy. They're all at the back, none in the middle. So pretty spacious, much bigger, I wouldn't say much, but quite a lot bigger than the uh, lavatories on 737. Cute little got hook, mirror. We've now started our descent into Rome, Italy, and I'll quickly conclude this trip port with Turkish Airlines right here, right now. Our journey today started at Istanbul Airport. The transit process was really simple and easy at Istanbul. There was no passport check at all. You simply head to the transit area, scan your onward boarding pass, and you'll be entering the security zone. There was like no wait there. Within 5 minutes, I made it to the departure level. We then went to the Miles and Smiles Lounge. You can never spend enough time there. There's so much to do and eat. The shower rooms are beautiful as well. We then boarded our A321 flight to Italy. The average fleet age for Turkish Airlines is 8 years old. This aircraft is 12. So it is quite old for the airline and you can tell. TV is a bit old and the monitor is a bit loose. The worst part for us was the missing USB port and charging outlet. Other than that, the seat was comfortable, IFE was great, and it's still a very superior product compared to many European short-haul aircraft. As for the meal service, both pastas were great. Mine tasted healthier, the regular one tasted cheesier. Overall today, it was a great flight, and I highly recommend this airline. For your reference, the airfare on this route on board Turkish starts from 6,030 Turkish Lira. Turkish operate this route four times a day with a mixture of 737, A321 and Airbus A330. So that's it for the conclusion today. Thank you so much for watching. Again, please like, comment and share. Feel free to follow my social media like Instagram, Snapchat and Be Real. I post regularly on those. And if you become my Patreon or PayPal Me member, you'll receive early access to my videos. Thanks again for watching and stay around for the Rome vlog. I'll show it right after landing. See you later, bye bye.
We just made it to Rome Fiumicino. We were among the first passengers to clear immigration. So basically there were three queues. So you've got all the European on one side. UK, Canada and Australia can use e-gates as well, but another set of e-gates. When we were there it was just me and six foot four. And you've got a longer queue for any other passport holders. We're taking the train to Rome city centre, Rome Termini station. Tickets are quite expensive at 14 euros. The journey takes about half an hour. Welcome to Cosmopolitan Hotel, uh, Tapestry. Tap tapestry collection by by Hilton. No, 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 no. It's fine. <laughs> so um, we've got open wardrobe, working desk, and apparently, according to that guy over there, it's not a small room for Rome. It's my first time here, but has been here before. Uh, ooh, coffee, tea, right here. Never seen this brand before. There you go. Um, You've got a mini safe, mini fridge. How do I? Oh, everything's on the different side in Italy. The bed, king bed. We got upgraded from a queen room to a king room when I did my online check in. And at the reception, I got upgraded to a king room with a view and here's the so-called view lavatory a bit tiny but it's fine i suppose it looks really nice rain shower coat hook I really, really like the room. It's really modern. You've got five, not four pillows, and it's quite cozy. Hello, it's 5 a.m. We're gonna go out for a cute little walk. So we slept for like six hours, and we got woken up by a phone call from Hong Kong. So we decided to go out for a walk and don't bother to sleep again. We noticed so many cars in Italy got dents on it, specifically Rome. And when I went to Matera, cars didn't look like that. I can hear the fountain. The Trevi Fountain, absolutely 100% worth waking up early for. There's only five people here, including the cops. It's now 5.24. Tourists are coming. So we better go. We're now just walking around God knows where, we stumbled upon this police station.
Aesop. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. It's now 6.50 a.m. We just got back to the fountain. We were just walking past. The hotel is about a five minute walk from here. I wouldn't mind walking past this every day. So our room is just somewhere there. Breakfast was lovely. Look at my belly. So now we're gonna check out the view from our room. Beautiful. We've got traffic down there, but uh, the noise barrier is pretty good. Tomorrow or day three, we are flying KLM to Amsterdam. We're just checking in on our phone. It's now quarter past nine, we went out again for a walk. First time taking the train or tube or metro here in Rome. We just got off somewhere, I forgot, and we're just walking towards Vatican City. Right behind those walls, Vatican City! Look at the line! Mad!
our last stop of the walking tour is Gian Nicolo. From there we can overlook the whole city of Rome. We then walked back to the hotel, had a little nap, then went out for dinner. I forgot to take pictures or videos of it. So that's it for the vlog. I hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you so much for watching. And a big big shout out to all my patrons and PayPal Me members for your continuous support. And I guess I'll see you again next week when I upload. Ciao.